In the last video, we went through kind of an overview of the SN1, SN2, E1, E2 decision. And we talked about the four questions that we need to ask when we're trying to evaluate with our reaction. And we go SN1, SN2, E1, E2, and sort of in descending order of importance. So today, we're going to look at this first question, the type of substrate uh, on the carbon attached to the leaving group. It's a primary, secondary, or tertiary. And we're going to save these, sec these other questions for, for later videos. So today, we're just going to focus on looking at the type of substrate and trying to answer what they can tell us about the type of reaction we're going to see. Okay, so part one, the substrate. What can this tell us? So let's just draw an example. Let's imagine that we are looking at a primary alkyl halide. So um, I'm going to draw in, let's put in iodine. Here's an example. What can we make, what decisions can we make about uh, an, a primary alkyl halide? Can we just law on a logical basis. What do we know about the SN1, the SN2, the E1, the E2? Well, remember carbocation stability, primary carbons, carbocations are the least stable, okay, and they are the least sterically hindered. So what do we know, what reaction do we know which depends a lot on carbocation stability? Well, that would be the SN1 and the E1 reactions, right? The key step in both the SN1 and the E1 is formation of a carbocation. So this is not, if we see a primary alkyl halide, we know it's not going to be SN1 or E1. We can we can very confidently rule out the SN1 and the E1 reactions. It's extremely unlikely that we're going to form a primary carbocation. And knowing that the primary carbons are the least sterically hindered, what reaction do we know which depends the most on steric hindrance, right? It's the SN2. The SN2 is is going to be the most favored because we sometimes call it the big barrier for the SN2 reaction is steric hindrance. So the less steric hindrance there is, the faster the SN the, the faster the reaction is going to go. In this case, faster the SN2 reaction is going to go. And we haven't really talked about the E2, but we can say that with a good degree of certainty that if your alkyl group is primary, you can really be pretty confident in saying this is going to be an SN2 reaction. It's going to be an SN2. There are, you know, I'm not going to say there's there's no exceptions to this, but this is almost certainly going to be an SN2. If it's secondary, we actually, actually I'm going to skip secondary and we'll do tertiary next. If it's tertiary, what do we know about tertiary carbon? So here's an example of a tertiary alkyl halide. Let's put a, you know, we could have a bromine here or tosylate or something else, which is a good leaving group. Remember what we know about tertiary carbons is tertiary carbocations are the most stable, right? And also, they are the most sterically hindered. And rather than saying that because they're going to be the most stable. Remember, this this favors. This is going to favor SN1 and SN2. Sorry, SN1 and E1. Sorry. Um, we can't definitively say that that it's going to go through SN1 and E1 at this point yet. We don't have enough information, but we can certainly rule out the SN2. So rather than just like confirming, I think it's better to to rule things out, to to deny or to to falsify. So. Rule out the SN2 if you see a tertiary alkyl halide. It's not going to go through the SN2. Okay. Now, what about if it's secondary? If it's secondary, we, we're actually going to need more information. We don't have enough information if, if it's secondary. We need to ask more questions about, we were talking about it earlier, uh, we need to ask about the type of nucleophile and the type of solvent, temperature, and so forth. So secondary, we need more information. Now there is another class, and actually I should have put um, I should have put methyl group up here as well. 
Um, so if it's methyl, you can guarantee it's going to be SN2, because actually we wouldn't be able to have an elimination reaction. Okay, besides methyl, there's one other class that we should discuss, and that is those sp2 hybridized carbons sp2 so for example if you have an alkene attached to a br or if you have a benzyl or a phenyl group which is attached to a leaving group like like this like ots in these cases no reaction no reaction. We can't have an SN2 reaction occur on an, on an sp2 hybridized carbon. We also, for the purposes that we're going to be looking at, can't have an E2 reaction occur on an, SN, an sp2 hybridized carbon. So if you see at a leaving group attached to an alkene of some kind, we're going to be looking at no reaction present. Okay, so no, no reaction possible. So if you see that, that's the decision to make. Okay. So this sort of sums up some of the major issues with the substrate. Like I said, if it's primary, you, you can rule out, you know, you can, you can rule out SN1 or E1. It's probably going to be the SN2. If it's tertiary, you can certainly rule out the SN2. You know, it might also be the E2. We need to be able to rule that out in the next step. So let's just look at a couple examples to make it a little bit more concrete. Okay, so in example one, we've got NaOH, we've got an alkyl halide. What type of alkyl halide are we looking at here? Well, it's primary. So primary, we said almost certainly SN2. So SN2, what would that product look like? Well, we'd be breaking carbon to bromine, we'd be forming, remember, carbon to oxygen. So we would get that. That would be our product. Okay, so it would go through an SN2. Now, what about this situation? We've got a tertiary alkyl halide. And so we've got a tertiary alkyl halide and we can rule out we can rule out SN2 here. We can't quite yet, based on the information we have, we can't make any other decisions. We, we haven't ruled out the E2 yet. So we still have the E2 as a possibility. So knowing what we know just about the substrate, not making any other decisions. That's all we can really do at this point. So just rule out the SN2. Uh, now in this third example, we have, notice a bromide. It's attached or bromine attached to uh, cyclohexane, but it's actually not a cyclohexane, it's a benzene ring. And this is sp2, sp2. So there's actually going to be no reaction here, no matter what. For our purposes, there's going to be no reaction. We can't do SN1, SN2, E1, E2 with an aryl halide, so aryl or an alkenyl halide. And in this last example, we've got a cyclopentane attached to an iodine and a KCN. And we really, we can't rule out anything here, not yet. can't rule out anything yet. So we're just going to leave that as it is. Okay, so that's some of the decisions you, sort of examples of types of decisions you need to make. So the number one thing to ask yourself is whether or not you're looking at a primary, secondary, tertiary, or methyl, or sp2 hybridized carbon with a leaving group. And from there you can make certain decisions about what reactions to rule out and what reactions um, may or may not be possible.